one knows who they are, they're very timid. So I would probably that come from. That's open for disease. That snapped off. Snapped this one off. Has now been My old man passed away in the 30th of June this year and I was finding it hard. Dad bought this tree for me two years ago. G'day folks, Jason from the Utter Farm here. We're actually on the Utter Farm property at the moment. What I'm going to do is I've got these paddle panels I need to set up around my solar system there. That's the unit. It's got four panels on and that feeds my watering system gravity feed that tank up the front of my property to do the watering system for my cell grazing. The reason I've got to put kennel paddles around it is today we're going to be having a bit of a cattle drive bringing the herd up here and grazing along in the riverfront here. There's a lot of green grass so I want to bring them up and get this trampled down and that'll give the paddocks we have got rest because it's a bit of a dry spell at the moment. It's spring and we haven't had any rain all winter so it's a bit dry. We want to use this up save slashing it before i set those panel. panels up i just want to show you something i pulled up the car and i noticed i've lost a lot of forage here these seed heads are in about that four foot high the leaf matter was that high the leaf matter is now a foot off the ground so it's been grazed i know it can't be kangaroos because they've only got a small mouth and they will nibble one or two leaves at a time i know it has to be livestock and i know cattle because there's not only is cow manure the dead giveaway is the cow's got a bigger mouth than a kangaroo. When a kangaroo grazes, it's more or less one or two leaves and uneven graze. Because the livestock or cattle have got that bigger mouth, they wrap the tongue around the majority of the plant and rip it off. So it makes it a nice flat surface that's been grazed and not just sporadic heights. So I know it's livestock and it's very disappointing because we're coming into a dry summer now, potentially drought they're saying, and I save this particular area across the top here knowing it was green to give my paddocks rest until we do get rain so to know it's been chewed down is very disappointing i'll have to have a word to my neighbors because it's not the first time it's happened this is about the third time now that they've come down this riverbank and grazed all my grass off giving my livestock nothing to graze and they've broken through the barbed wire fences moving forward that won't be happening because i'm going an electric fence all the way in my perimeter and they won't be breaking out, or they won't be touching the hot wire to get through. But it's very disappointing that it's happening now, in the time of drought, when I'm desperately need this grass to feed my well, livestock. Linders. Yeah, they aren't droughties. Anyway, I've got the video on for a minute. We're just talking about those livestock, and look what we've come across. One, two, three, four, five six that we can count. I know who they are. They're very timid. So I know what property they've come from. I've got to try and drive them back over the property now. They're not tame, so this is going to be a difficult event. I'm going to have to put this camera down for a minute and try and drive them back through a gate. This is going to be interesting. I've got a gateway down there. That's where they're heading back to from their property. Two of them are headed back now. I don't that like our chances of getting them through this gate down here. It's only a, I think it's a 12 foot gate. Righto folks, this is not the video I thought I'd be bringing today. We can't be grazing up here now. We just had a look across the whole riverfront here, which is about a thousand foot, roughly that 300 meters of riverfront we got. And the whole lot has been grazed right down to the ground. I reckon three quarters grazed down to that foot height already. So now I've got no grass for my livestock. But that's the good news. This would have to be one of the hardest videos I've made. Up here, you know, myself and Nicole are pretty passionate about our fruit trees. They've been decimated, I reckon, probably a quarter. We're going to have to pull out and start again. As you can see, there's cow manure right round. There's leaves. This is a good one. There's probably only a couple of branches off that tree being broken. The mango hasn't been touched. All the leaves have been snapped, been snapped off their bananas. A couple of banana trees laying down. And they've just smashed on all the leaves. That foliage up there and ate all the suckers off. This is one of our stone fruit trees. 
Yep, donut. This would be a donut heat. If you can see all the leaves have been eaten off this side of the tree. They dug all the dug all the mulch away. Branches broken in the tree here. Oh, we don't know the damage until we have a good look. This is This is our grapefruit tree. Look at all the branches on the ground, leaves. Snapped off branches there. This main branch coming out here is all busted off. This is Nicole's baby, only a foot high when we started there, and that is absolutely wrecked. This whole three quarters of this tree now, that, that's open for disease. That's snapped off, snapped off, snapped off. We've only got one branch left out of our four main branches. So I don't think that's gonna survive. If it is, it's not gonna be a healthy tree. All that's been snapped off. been snapped off there, there, all the branches feeding this side of the tree is all gone. We don't know how this one's going to go because now the weight is going to be pushing on that side of the tree and want it to lay it over. This one for me is really heartfelt. There's no way this can come back. Got the root out the ground. I don't know if you've got noticed, but I missed a video about three videos back. I didn't put one. Normally, put one up every eight days. I didn't put one up. My old man passed away in the 30th of June this year, and I was finding it hard. Dad bought this tree for me two years ago, and every time we come out and water it, and fertilise it. I think of Dad, now it's been destroyed. It's the only living memory I had of me, old man. The past, the past you can grow back. I can roll out bales of pay, that's no drama. But I can't replace a memory of my dad. It's the first time it had fruit on it this year. We haven't had a crop on it. Oh, I can't go on, guys. Oh. Now, we can't bring our livestock up today. There's no pasture left. We've got to find where they're getting out, the neighbours. So we've got to find out where they're getting through this fence and repair it. I don't know what we're going to do about our fruit trees. There's probably out of the 17 we got, there's four of them that absolutely destroyed we need to pull out. So I hope you guys have a good morning, a terrific afternoon and an awesome evening, wherever you're watching this from, and we'll catch you later.